Hi, good morning. Whoop! <laughs> just dropped my glasses. <laughs> mm, good morning. <laughs> oh gosh, a bit of a rush to get here this morning for nine o'clock. This is me, Shakti, and I am here this morning, really excited to be um, hosting a live stream with Olivia Bryant, who's over in Melbourne, Australia, and we're going to be talking all about the cervix and the power of the cervix and all kinds of really fascinating, interesting, exciting stuff, so I can't wait to get going. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to see if Olivia is there and then bring her into um, the conversation. This is going to be fascinating, ladies and gentlemen. So let's see. She says, I'm here. I've got my computer open because last time I did this, I had a bit of a... Um, da, 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 da. Right, there she is. Right, Olivia, this is working. I'm going to bring you on camera. How exciting. It's just beginning to happen. The magic is working. Technology, come on, be with us. So, huh, I thought I'd already brought you on camera. Maybe it's taking a little bit of a while because you're in Australia and I'm in London. <laughs> um, okay, it says I'm adding Olivia. So while we're just waiting for technology to do its magic, Olivia Bryan is um, an expert, a teacher, a facilitator who's passionate about the power of the cervix um, for women's empowerment. Yeah, I wanted to say more about it herself, really, but primarily for women's. Okay, sorry about this, guys. It keeps saying that she wants to be. Okay, I had to approve you. <laughs> this technology changes all the time. Um, Olivia comes from a very personal place of her own story of sexual healing and yeah. she is. <laughs> it's also nerve-wracking. <laughs> Being live. <laughs> oh, phew, phew, phew. All it's right. nerve-wracking for me too because every time I do it, it seems to be different and it's like I have to press a different button or something. But anyway. Yeah. Right yeah and it seems to me to be like the absolute antithesis of everything that we're doing with our bodies you know we're so into our nature and then we're expected to operate this machinery <laughs> doesn't compute <laughs> uh, hang on a second is that sunshine or light behind you oh uh, i'll just um t turn Oops. Is that better? It's, it's evening over there, isn't it? Sorry? It's evening over there, isn't it? It is. I'm going to put my headphones on, actually, because I, I don't seem to be hearing you so well. Sorry about okay. this, all of the mucking about that I'm uh, doing over here. Okay, great. Well, I know everyone's, everyone's really excited to, to hear what you have to say, so they will be waiting yes. through this little fluffling about. Don't worry. <laughs> Okay, we're I've ready, we're ready. Because I can see you better. Oh, it's so lovely to see you. Yes, thank you so much for having me. It's always so, um, I feel so grateful whenever I get to speak about this to anybody who will listen. So thank you for uh, having me on to share with your people. <laughs> oh, I really appreciate you giving the time. And, um, you know, what I love about technology, even though, yeah, it's a bit of a fuffle, is that we can just reach out and make these connections and then share mm. information with the world. And it's that, that's what I find incredible. And, you know, I just followed the impulse, actually, how I, even though, Olivia, I've known about your work for a while, I haven't done your course, and now I'm thinking, oh, I should really do the course. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a minute. I spoke to, as you know, Kate Orson a few weeks ago. Mm who was talking about cervical smears and some of the risks associated with that or um, potential pitfalls or just information that women need to have. Mm -hmm. And she sort of talked so highly of you. I thought, right, I really must speak to Kate. Mm -hmm. So um, here we are. 
Um, yeah, so would you like to introduce yourself, um, yes. assuming that people watching this might not know who you are and what you do? Yes. Okay. So uh, my name is Olivia Bryant and about, oh, four years ago now, I uh, set out on my own healing journey. I uh, went through a traumatic breakup um, and discovered that, you know, all the muscles of my pelvis were just kind of closing down on themselves. And so I, um, you know, I packed up my life and moved to Bali like all uh, women who are grieving relationships do, <laughs> I think. And, um, you know, I was working um, in as a sexologist, very interested in the subject. And so I kind of had a sense that I needed to get some body work. So I went and had a body work session with a man named Matt Schwentek. And he had his finger on my cervix at one point And he said, uh, do you feel this? And I said, feel what? And he said, do you feel your cervix? I was like, no. He could have had his finger anywhere. Like, I just could not feel his finger on my cervix. And I was like, I cannot feel a thing. And, um, you know, I was you know, I wasn't surprised because uh, I had very little relationship to my cervix at that point, but I was also slightly peeved because I knew through my work um, around the sexuality stuff that the cervix has this uh, orgasmic potential. So I was like, okay, what do I do? How do I get my cervix to feel? And so Matt said, you know, go away and stimulate your cervix for 21 days. Well, I started Olivia, the practice. Olivia. Can I stop you a second? <laughs> Sorry. It's just, I think people are going to be watching this and their jaws are going to be dropping already by some of the stuff that you've said. Oh. Like, this is... <laughs> Sorry, I don't know who my crowd is. <laughs> yeah, I, I suspect that quite a few people will be watching this and they'll be thinking, hang on a second. So if you don't mind, I know this is really exciting, but I'd love to just back up a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, go because, for it. Because there's there's so much that you're dropping in because it's so commonplace to you now that yeah. probably isn't going to be to a lot of people watching. Yeah, so yeah. first of all, you were already working as a sexologist, is that right? Is that what you said? Yeah, yep, yes, I was. So I was already so helping. So what is that? Uh, it's basically anything. It's such a broad term, anything in the field of sex. So you can be a sex worker and be a sexologist. I happen to be a coach, coaching therapy with women who were uh, struggling with uh, generally a lot of sexual shame. So that was my key passion area. And the funny thing was when I went to Bali, I was like, I'm done. I'm not going to do any more of this. <laughs> I don't want to talk about sex anymore. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's what I was right. doing. So that's what you were already doing. So, And then you also said, you already understood something about the cervix, which, you know, I think most women, or most people, most men and women will not be aware of anything mm. about the cervix. I mean, yeah. we're not taught this anywhere. So what did you already know about the cervix before yeah. you met Matt? It was so funny. I look back at the, the course of events now and I'm like, wow, okay. Hmm. I, I actually remember reading a passage in a book written by Dr. Barry Komazarok and Beverly Whipple who in 2012 Ooh. did studies on the cervix and they, uh, they worked with women who had spinal cord injuries um, and yeah. they discovered that they, could, they had no register of any other sensation be below the waist. However, they could feel cervical pleasure and in some cases cervical orgasm. And so they surmised from their studies that the cervix is independently orgasmic via the vagus nerve that does not bypass the spine. So this is right. absolutely so huge. I could talk about this. This is a different, we'll move to that at another time, um, place, hopefully. But okay. this is massive yeah. that, the, that the cervix is attached to the vagus because the vagus, as you might know, is responsible for uh, our self-regulation. Um, and right. so it can take us into bliss or it can take us into complete freeze. So uh, nice. the cervix has this amazing pathway between the cervix all the way through the body, all the way up 
into the brain. And so it is this orgasmic organ. And you're right, people, me, most people don't know about it. Doctors don't know about it. In fact, I was contacted by a PhD student who was being taught by her professor that the cervix uh, is numb and has no nerve connections. And we actually know it has three nerve connections and right. one oxytocin pathway. So it is a very powerful, uh, it is, that's actually the, has the most connections between organ to brain than any other part of our sexual anatomy. Obviously we birth through it, so it has to be like this powerful organ yeah wow i'm just like my whole body is <laughs> mm. like as you're sharing this this is just so much intense energy and power in i know i mean i'm pretty <laughs> it's pretty intense and i'll just add to that that the that the cervical orgasm is something different than uh, what I, I would say, well, I know actually that about 10% of the population have experienced it. So the most innovated, the most nerves and the least sensate, which is very suspicious to me. Um, and so um, the cervical orgasm feels different than any other orgasm that you could experience. It is actually, you know, uh, in Tantra, they, or the Eastern traditions, they claimed it as the spiritual orgasm because it blasts you into a sense of oneness and unity consciousness. So I think this is so profound because we birth into the universe, into our physical bodies through the cervix, and we birth, we, we, ex we expand into the universal through the cervix. I just find it so amazing. <laughs> yeah. So there's no proof about this transcendent orgasm. It's all experiential and we have tons of testimony. So it's like the experience of having DMT. So if any of your listeners have heard of ayahuasca, um, it is the, the psychoactive substance that's in every living thing that causes a, um, a spirit connection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, you're so beautifully articulate about this. It's wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, again, more questions coming, and this is brilliant. So had you already experienced, did you already know in your body the cervical orgasm? No, I did not. This, and I, and I, and I always say this, like, I see, my, I see myself as a guide and a facilitator. I bring together people who are the wisdom keepers, and I um, so it, I've been. Oops, lost connection for a minute. Uh, okay, yes, here we are. Okay. It's all right, I'm here. Yeah, just cut okay. out for a minute, but you're back. Um, uh, yeah, so I had to journey with everyone. So the, 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 the end of my story before was uh, like I had this yeah. mission okay, go away and revive your cervix and uh, do it for 21 days. And I started this process and I just got so bored. I forgot about it because I couldn't feel much and I was so bored and I was so used to, you know, other ways of experiencing pleasure and orgasm. I was like, what is this? This is so boring. I'm never going to have an orgasm ever again in my life. <laughs> and so, Can I put because... my hand up and ask how, how you were stimulating your cervix or what, what you were doing? Can I ask? <laughs> Um, like, did you have one of these or were you using your hands? Uh, like yeah, we, um, well, in the very beginning, I was using my hands and uh, trying really hard with one of those things. But um, actually, <laughs> I have like a Tyrannosaurus Rex shaped body, like long body and short arms. So it's super uh, awkward for me. So I actually ended up designing <laughs> my own custom custom wand for me. <laughs> I did all this for me. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, it benefited other people. <laughs> so I started this group okay. and I asked, does anybody else want to come and stimulate their cervixes? And yes, I used a wand. I used my fingers. I used basically anything that could get, get there. Um, and, <laughs> um, and, um, and so it was crazy because I had like 1,200 women join this circle. And I thought, holy shit, I know nothing. I know nothing. What am I going to do? So I called in as many people who I thought might be able to talk about the cervix. It turns out not many people can. 
Uh, and so mm -hmm. we as a community went on a journey together, exploring and learning and figuring it out as we went. And it took me eight months of, of, um, of working on releasing all the tension and trauma held within till I started to completely change my whole experience of pleasure and orgasm and what that could be. And only recently, four years into my journey, or uh, would have been three and a half years into my journey, I experienced my first cosmic orgasm. And I've had only two. And for me and my body and what I'm holding, it's a very, very rare thing. For others, it, it doesn't seem to be so rare. So I always see that, mm. like, I'm on a process of healing. Sometimes I think, oh, my God, that was a fluke and it'll never happen again. <laughs> but, but, you know, I, I, uh, I never want to stand up here and say I've got all the answers. I want to stand up here as someone who also is just like I'm not naturally gifted at this stuff. Um, I was late into my sexual journey. Um, you know, when I started this stuff, I was addicted to vibrators as a way of, of orgasming okay. and – you know, that's a very hard path to break out of. So I had a lot of healing that I had to do um, in all aspects of my of my being and body. So it's been a, a huge, beautiful ride for me. And so I also have people in this, the group that they are, I mean, I feel like I've, I remember when I first started, I thought, oh my God, who am I to be leading this, you know? But, you know, I think I, that's why I say I, I, we learn all this in community and with, and I see one woman as having an experience that every woman can have, like we are all aspects of the one. And so I see people having these <laughs> freaking profound experiences and I'm like, yes, thank you. Thank you for showing me what is possible in my body. Because I think it's really, uh, it's really easy for us as women to get really on the comparison train and start feeling inadequate. Mm -hmm. and, and that's not very yeah. empowering at all. What we're better off doing is is being curious about what it, what's going on out there in the world of the human body and being like, oh wow, okay, cool. So I know this is possible. There's just some some things that I need to learn yet, or some things that I need to let go. And for me, yeah. it's still a journey of becoming more and more in my body. I'm very flighty, and and um, I, I my journey is 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 going downwards and interestingly the the one of the main teachings in the self cervix program is we move the energy downwards we do not move the energy upwards so it's actually a completely different teaching than than uh than is commonly taught in sexuality so yeah. we are we are actually birthing ourselves into our body down to the earth and then there's a ricochet effect that that the energy just goes up naturally anyway Right. We've got to get down. We've got to get down. We've got to get down. There's no point in pulling up. Most of us have got so much tension in our bodies. We don't want, you know, we don't mm -hmm. want to be pulling up, pulling up. We're already up. We need to get down and relax and <laughs> deep and earthy. Yeah. So you've said some, there's quite a few things there, Olivia, that I want to come back to again, which is um, drawing attention to the um, the subtle powerful vitally important connection between our whole body mind complex as it were and our and our anatomy and our womb and yoni and cervix so again I, I think for many people who are watching some will be aware of that and many won't be um, so for example I noticed that you talked about your breakup and then immediately connected that with your pelvic area and the experience that you were having. So for a lot of people, a lot of women, that would not be obvious, I mm. think. Mm. And you've also talked about tension and trauma. Mm. And again, I think for mm. a lot of women watching, there might not be an awareness as fully, at least as you're holding mm. it now, of mm. the fact that there might even be tension or trauma uh, yeah. located in the yoni, vagina, cervix area so mm. could you talk a little bit about what sort of tension and trauma you're yeah. talking about yeah so uh one of my favorite teachers david cates he says enlightenment is the cessation of all tension in the body and i i kind of took that on when he said it and i was like okay 
And it wasn't until I had my these deep orgasmic experiences that I really got what it means to be free. And, you know, when I had that experience, so when I had, you know, we store our emotions, we store the experiences uh, in the cellular memory and the tissue of our body, you know, it's like a, you know, you can even feel it when you're mad and you, you raise your shoulders and then you end up with like sore, tight neck around here. And, you mm-hmm. know, a lot of us hold our tension in our pelvises, in our pelvic floors in very minor ways. Like just watch yourself when you're driving. Feel how you're sitting and watching this video. Is your like perineum clenched at all? Just relax down. Um, most of us are storing uh, tension at an unconscious level. We don't even know that we're holding it because it's just become something that we're used to. To a certain degree, we right. need to hold a level of tension in order to function. That's why these orgasmic experiences, we need to be in a kind of an altered state in a very safe space. So it's not like we, we, we can make this wrong because, it, you know, to a certain extent, this armoring is very necessary. But for women also, a major cause of tension inside of her body is premature penetration, for example, mm-hmm. and not being ready for sex and therefore having to brace, particularly at the top of the vagina so that the cervix doesn't get hit. Because when a woman is fully aroused, her cervix and her mm-hmm. womb will lift. So if it's not, yeah. you're not aroused and you're not ready, the cervix takes a whack and this is how it gets numb. Because if you keep hitting yeah. something repeatedly, either you check out, so you lose the consciousness, you lose your connection, or it literally protects itself by going numb or by indicating with pain. So um, if you explore inside of yourself with your finger or with a wand, you might and probably will discover areas of numbness or pain that um, – that we invite you to massage out. And I actually feel that this is a necessary, um, a necessary lifelong practice, just as necessary as any mm-hmm. other form of physical therapy you might give yourself, ranging from yoga to going to another different kind of massage. It's funny because this place in our body, it's so key to our psyche and yet it is so ignored. Well, we easily go and get a body massage, right? But how often do we go and get a yoni massage if you're in the mainstream? Probably not really at all <laughs> because there's so much <laughs> taboo around it. And yet it is yeah. a seat of so much of our consciousness. It's, you know, just think about it. When you are locked down in sexual shame, how that affects your sense of self. Mm-hmm. If we can release the holding around what it means to be a woman, generational shame that we hold inside of our bodies, then um, we have much more of a chance of getting into this place where we can receive and allow pleasure. Uh, as long as we are resisting, um, it's very difficult because there's just not enough blood at a practical level getting through the tissue. And also your vagina needs to be able to be able to move, it needs to move, right? It's like a, a jellyfish. Maybe. And if it's mm-hmm. stuck in tension, it just, it can't move anywhere and then women wonder why they're having trouble orgasming. It generally, I can pretty much guarantee it's going to come down to some level of tension, whether it's physical tension or a mental tension or emotional tension. Mm-hmm. So the healing work is coming to a place and, 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 it, and it's not like you get to a place of clearing all the tension and it's done forever. Like life happens, we live, right? So right. things happen. Right. This is why... We, this is why we have to keep coming back to it and checking in and going, okay, how's my tension? I need to just give myself, like use one of those wands and get in there and like, you know, and release myself back into my body and back into the ground. Yes, just this is my little wand, but I'm sure there are many other varieties and well, well, my jade egg's in there, but um, <laughs> some tools. But yes, um, I started to use, talk with my wand. <laughs> I love that you're... Um, and the thing, oh, there's so many... Like, <laughs> You're coming out with so much wisdom. It's like boom, 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 boom. So one, it really is. Um, one thing that I also want to draw attention to, again, in terms of the, the, the wisdom and the, the importance of what you're saying is that I think for many 
women, there will be the association that if I'm touching myself there, it needs to be sexual. But actually, this is way beyond mm. sexual, isn't it? Because it pertains to mm. our whole sense of being. Mm. Yeah, yes, and yes. Right. And uh, there's a couple of ways we could look at this. Like one is you could look at it at quite a, as, a, as quite a therapeutic um, and a ther therapeutic action, so taking action for your own healing. And we have to not deny the sexual element because um, I hope I'm not going to offend anyone, but I'm just going to speak. When your cervix is uh, at, its, yeah, at its optimal uh, state of, of being, the cervix is horny and hungry. <laughs> That's the best way I can put it. It's like, like it, it literally, uh, one of the most beautiful things that it can do is, is, is like it expands. And this hasn't happened to me, so I'm just going to say this, but I'm speaking from, from, from experiences of colleagues around me who have experienced this. I have actually been not partnered through most of this journey, but with their partners at the cervix, mm -hmm. Like it, it kind of drops down. It's called the cervical kiss. It drops down. It expands and it sucks in. Let's just say it's a heterosexual dynamic and it will suck in the penis, like pull it in. And there's this kind of magnetic, like kind of connection between these two beings, two bodies. And the cervix, yeah. when it does that, it feels like this insatiable, like, like, yeah, just I just want to say the word horny because it literally is just like, Whoa, yeah, give me some. It's like, you know, so we can't deny that that is there. But you know, if the, if a woman is dealing with some sexual shame, I think uh, it the the key is to just go so so slowly. Just start at the entrance and see how you feel, breathing and loving yourself at the entrance, taking your absolute time. And feeling that shame and allowing that little girl who might be feeling shame to be there and just letting her have a voice and like, you know, essentially reparenting yourself through it because it is confronting and mm. I'm not going to deny it. Like it is really mm. confronting to, to go that deep mm. into our bodies. We literally mm -hmm. are, uh, it's a, this is why the cervix is asking us to go into our most vulnerable place and for us mm -hmm. to go into our most vulnerable place where we are able to surrender, this requires actually mm -hmm. quite a great deal of empowerment. So mm -hmm. no longer can we just go along with the touch that we're getting. We have to start asking for what we want and giving ourselves the touch that really feels good, giving ourselves time. And so it is yeah. a kind of a... This, it's interesting because the clitoris was a huge win for, for the feminist movement, for feminism. Reclaiming the clitoris and the vibrator movement in the, of the 70s, you know, the, the, the circles where women could finally have a way of pleasuring themselves and getting off and, like, you know, have sex where they, they weren't left, like, feeling unsatisfied. Right? And so this is a really important piece in, in, in the feminist movement and sexuality. And I feel like the cervix yeah. is taking us a whole nother step deeper into our empowerment because mm -hmm. to really activate the cervix, we've got to start looking at our, our, start being responsible also for some of our habits when it comes to sexuality, not feeling like we right. deserve to receive is one big one. Yeah. Getting really in touch with our worthiness so that we either give ourselves the time or we ask for the kind of touch that is going to be tender and loving, that is going to be uh, attentive enough to help our bodies, to assist our bodies to open. So it, that takes courage and power. So, um, And also looking at, at holding boundaries, you know, like mm -hmm. where we might open our bodies to please someone else, you know, mm -hmm. and then sacrifice Guilty. our own needs. <clears throat> Me too. I was running this journey and I was like, I did it. And I, I really did it. And I wrote about it and I was like, Oh my God, I just had this experience. And I, I just completely overrode my internal wisdom. I just, mm -hmm. I just wanted to be wanted, you know, I just wanted mm -hmm. to be adequate and I wanted to be that sexy woman. And I just overrode what I knew, knew to be true. And that's very common. So it's not a wrong, it's just a learning with doctors, you know, mm -hmm. uh, 
something that I teach is how do we become really empowered and do the pap smears ourselves? You know, tell the doctor right. when they may enter. So don't enter my body until I tell you I'm ready. Thank you very much. Okay, you, I'm going to put it in the speculum. Now you can take the swab. I just need to take a breath. Give me a second. I'm relaxing. Okay, go. So it's all under your charge rather than somebody else having charge over your body. And this is what the cervix right. has to teach us. Right. So with you. So with you on all of that. And um, I just want to come back for a moment to that thing you said about the, the way that when a woman is really aroused, the, the womb lifts to um, sort of make contact with the cervix pleasurable. And if you're not fully aroused, that doesn't happen. And it's actually painful and damaging. I have experienced both. So I know, I know what that's like, and I know the profundity of it and the bliss of it. And I also know the opposite um, of just allowing something that wasn't feeling good and wasn't right and I wasn't aroused and I wasn't ready. And like when I think about it now and I think about how many women are probably experiencing that or have done, it sort of makes me cringe and feel mm. sadness in my heart. Um, mm. And then I sort of come to the other side of that, which is, yeah, if we're engaging in heterosexual sex or same sex sex, but there's a penetration involved, how do we then, um, cause it is about empowerment, but then how do we educate our partners? Cause obviously they're part of this, um, to feel empowered mm. as well uh, themselves without feeling like you're constantly saying, no, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. Don't like it. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> kind of bringing awareness into um because you know the thing that you also said yeah one of the key causes of the trauma is premature yeah. uh, penetration yeah right? totally penetration. uh one of the shadows of the of the female sexuality uh empowerment oh. here oh it's gone maybe it's frozen at her end for a minute we can hear you. Uh, I've lost you. I've lost I'm you. I'm here. We can hear you. Hang on. I'm just going to message her. Um, I've just here. lost you. Okay. Now you're back. Now you're back. Now you're back. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I missed a whole thing of what you were saying, but I'll just say something based on what I heard. Uh, one of the, one of the shadows, one of the shadows of the female sexual empowerment movement is the shadow of entitlement and expecting our partners to know what to do and being demanding and, you know, being frustrated when they don't get it right and having expectations without actually yeah. taking responsibility for uh, pleasuring ourselves and really uh, getting very good at asking for what we want and also being amazing at um, gratitude and, and understanding how vulnerable it is for our partners to be wanting to step in, you know, um, and on the other side, the it's stepping into the pleaser shadow, you know, so we, we, there's a lot of cleaning up to do in terms of touch dynamics. Um, um. Oh no. Okay, okay. Are you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry, um, my phone rang and interrupted. Sorry, that was really so, important. You were talking about... Okay, so I was just going to say there's a really important work by Betty Martin called The Wheel of Consent. So we can start really slowly with our partners and there's a game called The Three Minute Game. It's super simple. How would you like me to touch you? How would you like to touch me? And you just start for three minutes and so you warm up. You don't... You don't necessarily have to go all the way into like, okay, baby, now I want you to like awaken my cervix. Like, oh Lord, that's so intimidating. <laughs> like you can start slowly and you can also make it fun and you just want to say what you really enjoy and, you know, and you give them permission to not get it right. Like it's, you're both in a, um, an, an exploration and, and here's the key. Somebody cannot give you an experience. They can assist you in your own pleasure and healing. Like they're there mm. as assists. You are 100% responsibility responsible for what you receive, and it cannot be mm. dependent. It cannot be dependent on a partner. 
You have to become extremely good at receiving through your own taking, through your own asking, and just through the ability to get so sensitive to touch that, um, you know, uh, he, there's, there's something beautiful in every touch, you know, um, with, within reason, within reason. And that's the other part of it. It's like also, you know, um, being really clear that if something is happening that you don't, you're not, not comfortable with, you just say, um, you know, if somebody asks for something that you don't want to do, it's like, can you ask for something else? You know, it's like, we've just got to grow up essentially and not take it all so personally. Mm -hmm. And this is mm. one of addressing some of our core wounds around touch is that we're conditioned to go along with touch since we were babies. And so mm -hmm. finally someone starts asking for what they actually want and it can trigger a whole bunch of stuff. So this is a real growing yeah. up process. So Betty right. Martin's three minute game is, is awesome training for learning how to ask for what you mm. want. It's fun and easy. And uh, yeah, just, and, and just being really generous with our, with our partners. From what you've learned, what does the um, cervix need or a woman <laughs> um, to give her the greatest opportunity to really connect with the pleasure potential that is there? And what would her partner need to know? I mean, I know you've kind of touched on this, but again, I just want to raise those questions again for those people who are watching, because I bet they'll be asking themselves this. They'll be like, what do I need to do? What do I need to do? What, what, how can I, you know, so from both people's perspectives, what does, a, what does the cervix need to open to uh, her ultimate that, That's such a huge <laughs> question. I have, like a, I have like 13 weeks of material. Um, to say three things. Actually, <laughs> funny, I'm doing a free I'm doing a free class on Friday called the Three Stages of Cervical Awakening, um, oh. and and essential journey in three phases. And I go through each of those phases in that free class. So um, the best way okay. that some people, somebody could find that is uh, to go to selfservix.com and go and look at the initiation journey, and they'll see a sign up there. With, or I might post the link under this video because. I mean, I'm giving an yeah. hour long talk just to give you perspective on how huge that question is. Um, I'll, okay. I'll sum it up in, in, a, in a, as quickly as I can. Like the first one is this, yeah. you need cervical consciousness. So you need to just start, start developing a connection to the cervix. So women can re re feel their vulva, their vaginas, their clitorises, but not their cervixes with their minds. Mm -hmm. So we have to start developing cervical consciousness and mindfulness that mm -hmm. develops that relationship to this place in our bodies so presence right it's mm -hmm. almost everything that you as a woman would need <laughs> the next thing the cervix need mm -hmm. is it needs loving touch so we need to show we need the nervous system in the body we need the body to relax under our touch so um, long prolonged uh, touch that doesn't race to the cervix takes its time to get there and it has loving intention so um and and a lot like a good decent amount of time uh, so the tension so when you is, say that you mean on the whole body not just on the oh cervix. yeah the whole body the whole body the whole, whole body. body but uh, particularly talking once we get to the cervix though you just you know there needs to be some attention on releasing tension and 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 giving it the time it needs to start feeling it might take a woman 20 minutes to start feeling any sensation on her cervix when she first starts if she's got if she's continually practicing there. Right. Um, and uh, the other thing that you need is to connect to your heart space. So uh, mm. this deep relaxation, I, I mean, the thing that's really interesting for me about all this is, you know, we have all of these practices, but where they're leading us to is actually an, our naturalness we're actually undoing, we're actually releasing and we're coming back to what is most natural like when we were babies. So we actually come back to a place of effortlessness. So there's no goal. I think if I could say that, that's one important mm -hmm. thing that the cervix needs is you're not going for a climax. You're just staying in mm -hmm. a relaxed state for as long as possible, stimulating the body. Right. If you start mm -hmm. to feel you're getting excited as you go towards the goal of a climax, 
I need to back off because you're the wrong neuro. Well, that's nice. It feels good, but it's, 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 you're going to, you're going to be uh, causing tension and overriding what the cervix can do. So the cervical orgasm occurs with deep relaxation. So as much as you want mm. to, you might want to get off and have a climax. We have to kind of bypass that and keep going. So it's a goalless state. And I think that that is another really important key. Uh, that I would just say that to the partners as well. Like stop trying to make your partner calm. It's like the <laughs> biggest turn off and it's going to cause <laughs> tension in the body mind and nothing's going to happen. So the giving the partner full space and permission just to feel and be as she is, you are not responsible for her orgasm. She is, right? You are there as an assist. And if you're in service of her, simply asking the question, how would you like me to touch you? And she's the one that gets to, gets to lead, really. And then she can relax when she knows that she has a partner who's willing to listen, right? So um, time and presence, not hurrying there, and having no goal and no expectation. One of the worst traps that we get into in partner sex is the woman feeling like she has to perform for her partner, the man feeling, well, let's just say whatever couple, doesn't matter whether you're hetero or man, woman, 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 what doesn't matter. Performance and pleasing, that terrible cycle, performance and pleasing. So you don't have to please your partner. She's responsible for asking for what she wants. You don't have to perform for your partner right? He, he's, he's got to learn that he's not responsible for how you're feeling, right? So, um, so uh, yeah, and, you know, um, you, you know, if, if it's a heterodynamic and you're having, you're making love, just so, it, this is assuming that, <laughs> this is why it's a long answer. I've made an entire program for men on this as well, because it takes a lot of consciousness. <laughs> I was going to say, lot of so a man well, man's going to be sitting here watching, maybe, maybe thinking, so hmm, what's in this for me then? <laughs> well, a lot is in it for him. So much is in it for him. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's like once, you know, he can actually get through limbic resonance, he can get what she's getting through her body. <laughs> um, when, you know, we actually made a whole program for men because men are also desensitized, have desensitized cocks, yeah. right? Pornography, masturbation yeah. habits, disassociation, shame around being a man, shame around being a sexual man, causes yeah. also causes a numbness and a disconnection. So, so, so there's training there for a man if he wants to in order to create a more sensitive a penis that that can that doesn't need so much friction when entering the body that can just mm -hmm. like be even un, unerect doesn't matter. Just can really feel through the skin. So it's, it's mm -hmm. a, you know, um, so it's a very sensitive organ and men out there, mm -hmm. you should listen. You should listen to your cock. If it's not getting hard, you know, there's something going on. You've got, it's a very wise organ. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. um, and so, yes, yeah, slow entry, just being really aware of her readiness. Yeah. And this is going to make a man's sexual experience profound. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it's connection. At the end of the day, what we're seeking is connection. Mm -hmm. Orgasm, no orgasm. It really doesn't matter. What we're seeking is to feel ourselves through each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We really just want them <laughs> to feel ourselves and to connect. And that's what matters. All of the orgasm stuff, just take it all off the table. If it happens, it happens. It's beautiful. But but the the real root of it is just like, I just want to feel myself through you and feel you with me. Like That's it. So um, Thank you. just take yeah. all the pressure off the yeah. table. Yeah. Yeah. I've been blessed with experiences like that myself only a few times. And the one time when it was most profound, the, my partner was experiencing my orgasms in his body. Yeah. Simultaneously. So that's yeah. what happened. There was a complete merger and it was through that deep yeah. devotion, relaxation, yeah. you know, no goal, but then it happened anyway. And yeah. he, he was experiencing what I was experiencing in, in his own physical body. It was phenomenal. You so, are a channel. You become a channel and you literally, you, 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 
when you un- like what I got through my experience with the cervix and orgasm was it's so energetic and that's why I know every person can have this because it, it's we're all energy based beings we're all made of energy right at, at, a, at a real foundational level we're all made of energy these experiences are energetic like it's just energy mm-hmm. rushing through you so you have a partner who's inside you how can they not feel that yeah. Right. And that's why women with no cervixes can also have the cervical orgasm. <laughs> it's energetic. Uh-huh. Yes. Okay. That's another. Boop. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 that comes with a whole different journey. There's a lot of grief, a lot of stuff to release there, but it's still possible. Mm-hmm. Sounds really like, wow, like, wow, like woo woo. But it's, I mean, our bodies, we don't even oh, okay. under, understand what our bodies are capable of. When we, when we start looking at it from an energy perspective, it's like, whoa. And I am absolutely so much- not like that. I'm not like that. I'm very science-based. My dad was a scientist. I come from a very kind of pragmatic, like, have to prove it, have to prove it. But when I had this experience, I was like, holy shit. Like, my whole body turned into liquid light. Like, it was like... I don't know if it will ever happen again. I'm just grateful that it happened once. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Um, I feel like we could talk forever and ever. I'm just keeping an eye on the time. We've already been talking for 50 minutes. This is a long time. We could go on forever and ever, but I think probably it's good to begin to draw this to a close. Um, and of course, you've got your call on Friday. Um, people who are interested in what Olivia's been talking about, um, we'll post this below um, yeah. so people know where to go. But you're giving a free talk on Friday, but you're in Australia, so people in the UK or Europe. Oh, can it's, they can the get time. the replay. They can get the replay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And let's. And also, there's some things that you mentioned. You. Mentioned Martin, you don't mentioned a doctor whose name I couldn't write down and a Beverly Whipple. I remembered that because it made me laugh. <laughs> so we could go on. Okay. And what is the one thing that anybody watching this still now, a woman who wants to connect with her cervix, what would you say? Apart from obviously come and do my course, which is Lord. 